I recognize a lot of you familiar faces. Didn't I see you in the market yesterday? I shop so often in the supermarket. I have joined the frequent shoppers program. 4,000 times I get to shop there for free. <laughs> if you don't have the time or the patience to shop, yet you want to enjoy a good meal, it's very simple. Rule number one, always make sure to have a few cans and also a few dry goods available in your pantry. That's all you really need. Today, I want to show you something you can easily make. It's so easy. I make this absolutely approximately once a week or twice a week because it's very easy to do. Because I always have some ground beef or ground pork in my refrigerator because this is something that the whole family would enjoy. Here, I'm going to make a, what I call a hamburger, Chinese style. One thing that puzzles me is I don't understand why they call hamburger. There's no ham in the darn thing. <laughs> I think the more appropriate should be beef burger, Chinese beef burger. OK, here, I want to show you exactly what I have here. I have some mushroom, which I'm going to cut this up. Set it aside, put it over here, and chop it up. Set it aside, put it over here. And then, another one. If you want to make it bigger. Wow, <laughs> big. Not only big, you smash the darn thing. <laughs> wow, this is. You haven't seen nothing yet. <laughs> of course, I also want to do some green pepper to give some texture and flavor. This is another way to do it. You stack them all up like this, and you see, I'm showing you different techniques of doing it. In the meantime, I'm going to heat up my frying pan. You can use a skillet, or you can use a frying pan. It doesn't make any difference. Chop it up, set it aside, and we'll put it in this bowl. Now, all you really need is half an onion, okay? You go like this, okay? Slice it up, and then you go. <laughs> Total concentration. <laughs> Now, the most important thing, all I need is approximately half an onion, okay? Put them all over here. You don't need the whole thing because um, you can save it because I'm only making about two for myself. If you want to eat, you make it yourself. <laughs> okay. Now, always learn to clean up. It's this good habit. Always clean up so you do not end up having a disaster area by the time you're finished. Now, all you need is approximately four dry mushroom and about half a cup of water chestnut and about half an onion, mix them all up. And also one or two green onion and about one tablespoon or so chopped cilantro, okay? And also about half a teaspoon of salt and a tiny, tiny bit of white pepper. Make sure to put it in. And also, of course, you need about exactly one pound or three quarter pound would be fine ground beef okay mix it up with about two tablespoons of soy sauce two tablespoons of oyster flavor sauce and about two teaspoons of sesame seed oil and also a tiny tiny bit of oil tiny bit of oil the idea of doing that is when you cook it the oil would come out and it would not be too dry and then you shape this i want to show you I'm gonna put this over here. I'm gonna put this over here. You shape this with your hand. It's the most efficient, efficient mixer in the world. I have a battery here. <laughs> in the meantime, you shape this, shape this, shape this. And then in the meantime, you don't wanna make a mess. Okay. Make it into a meatball, shape it. Ha! Huh. 
<laughs> Shape this into a little petty. <laughs> this is how I practice a pause. <laughs> a wonderful petty. And then you put a tiny, tiny bit of oil, not much, just a tiny, tiny bit. Because this is a non stick frying pan. Put it right over here. Nice. Wow, look at this. Shape another one. Nicely brown. Now in America, you put everything on top. In China, when we do this, we put everything in, not on. That's why it's not hamburger. Chinese beef burgers. No bones about it. Now, when this is done, we'll clean this up because I said I only make two for myself. <laughs> Why I'm doing this, I'm going to turn this around. Oh, wonderful. Can you see that? Very good. Can you see that? Turn it to medium. In the meantime, I want to show you something exciting. I'm going to show you, you know, you do not, you cannot serve a burger without chips. Everybody have corn chips, potato chips. This is Chinese chips. When this is hot enough, the oil is hot enough, this is different color of chips. I put it over here, and please come. Please come. 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 One, two, three. Come. Please come. Don't embarrass me. See, it is coming. See that? When it's done, this is what you call shrimp flavored chips. Can you see how gorgeous this? Oh, All it takes. Isn't that wonderful? I love this myself. Look at this. And when you're done, you put it over here, and you can serve everything. Look at this. You can serve with the regular chips. I want to show you something. This is the regular American-style hamburger. Called this is potato chips, and this is a Chinese hamburger with different kind of chips. And also, let's put this wonderful looking one right over here with the Chinese hoisin sauce. And can you see how gorgeous? When you have no time to shop, but you have to rely on your pantry a lot more because this way, whatever you want to fix, just open your pantry, open your fridge. These are the few basic things that I think all of us need for Chinese cooking. Here, you start with a bottle of all-purpose soy sauce, some sesame seed oil. Once you open this, you should keep it in the fridge. Some oyster flavor sauce, and also rice vinegar. Of course, if you don't have rice vinegar, you can use a regular red wine vinegar, or regular apple cider vinegar, or distilled vinegar. It doesn't make any difference at all. And then you have, if you love hot and spicy food, chili oil. This is, I keep on reminding people, you can smoke your hair with this. <laughs> then the cooking wine. This is Shaoxing wine. You can use regular dry sherry. Of course, you need cornstarch, or tapioca starch, or arrowroot starch. Chili sauce, very important. If you like hot and spicy food, sesame seed. This is regular sesame seed. You can put it in your salad dressing. You can put it in a hamburger buns, all kinds of things. Of course, you should have rice. This is long grain rice. You can also have long grain rice plus medium grain rice. Cellophane noodle, of course, ginger and garlic. Now, if you love tea, like me, I'm a tea lover, then you should also have some tea. This is oolong tea. You can have jasmine tea or oolong tea. It's very, very simple. It's very, very good. So I'm going to show you what I can do with some of the things that I find from my pantry and also from my fridge. Now, first of all, in my pantry, I found some chicken broth. So I'm going to pull the chicken broth over here because I am going to do some tomato egg flour drop soup. Very simple dish, yet very nutritious. Here, I have a tiny bit of tomato. And I cut it up like this. One, two, see? And then go one, two, three. I chop it into little chunks like this. And then you go one, two, three. 
Now you got to use a nice sharp knife. If you don't have a sharp knife, you end up making tomato ketchup. <laughs> you put it over here. Okay, let's move this so everybody can see. Now I want to show you one more time. Very easy. One, two, three, and then go one, two, three, one, two, three. You see, a lot of tomato. Tomato is wonderful. I also have about four black mushroom, soak and dice. And I also have one or two green onion. And also, all you need is about one to two eggs, OK? And then I am going to make, I'm going to turn this up, because I'm going to make a little. First, we're going to put mushroom, because mushroom is nice and flavorful. We want to get the flavor out. And then some green onion, if you want. And not only that, I am going to put a tiny bit of tomato, OK? Now, this is enough <laughs> for six million people, so I'm going to use just enough for myself, OK? <laughs> this is not funny. <laughs> At home, you're watching, right? You think it's funny? <laughs> I don't think so. Now, then you also, when it's all nice and ready, all you have to do is put a tiny bit of Xiao Xing wine or dry sherry. Give that little touch, a spirit soup. <laughs> and then also, you want to make sure I put a tiny, a few drops of sesame seed oil, half a teaspoon to a teaspoon. When it's ready, look at this. When it's ready, all you have to do is shut off the heat or remove from the heat. And then you drizzle in the egg, which is already bitten. Let me remove this. The Chinese, when they serve this, it's very customary to salt to taste. Just a tiny bit of salt. This is all you need. <laughs> all you need. This is absolutely too much. <laughs> and then also a touch of white pepper. Oh, look at this. This is what you call a touch. Wow. I'm, not, I'm glad I'm not trying it myself. And then when it's done, you see, boiling, you shut it off, and then you remove from heat, and then you drizzle in a tiny, tiny bit of egg, which has already been. You see, while you're stirring it, you pull it in like this. Why you are stirring it? The reason why you're stirring it this way, you won't end up, you have, you, because you want to make egg flour drop. You don't want to, if you don't do it, they get stuck, you end up having egg omelet soup. <laughs> so make sure, it's very important. See, wonderful, beautiful dish like this. When it's done, all you have to do is put in this gorgeous looking bowl. Look at how beautiful. Nice egg flour. Isn't that easy to do? All you have to do is open your pantry, open your fridge, and then you have wonderful soup like this. Can you see that? This is beautiful. I think this is wonderful. It's nutritious. I'm going to set it aside and put it over here. Now, the next thing I want to show you. Thank you very much. The next thing I want to show you is very easy. The next thing I want to show you is roast beef salad with a Chinese dressing. Everybody knows that most of the time you need this kind of iceberg lettuce, cut it up a little bit. And I have some julienne carrot, julienne cucumber, and julienne green onion. I also want to julienne some leftover roast beef I have from my Christmas party <laughs> many moons ago. <laughs> Cut it up into long strips like this. If you have time, you cut it up. If you don't have time, you just throw the whole thing in there. Who cares? <laughs> and then you sprinkle this with carrot, because when you eat it, you can always, always mix them all up. And then green onion, and then roast beef. Oh, look at how gorgeous. Then you make a dressing. Now, a lot of people don't know. Everybody heard about French dressing, Italian dressing, Russian dressing. A lot of people don't know that. There's also Chinese dressing. The Chinese have been dressing for thousands of years. <laughs> now, first of all, I want to put a tiny bit of sugar. This dressing is very, very unique. I have sugar, I have garlic, minced garlic. This is about two teaspoons of sugar and about one to two teaspoons of garlic, mustard. OK, hot mustard, hot stuff. And also, I use a tiny bit of vinegar. Let me shoot. Mmm, this is oil. <laughs> they look like 
They look exactly the same to me. So make sure you s wow. rice vinegar. Mix it up. Make it into, don't add oil until the last minute. Also, use about a quarter of anywhere from two tablespoons to three tablespoons of soy sauce. Great exercise. <laughs> and then put a tiny bit of sesame seed oil slowly so you get a homogenized mixture. And then slowly drizzle in oil. <laughs> All of a sudden, I get shorter. <laughs> Nice a mixture. And this is going to guarantee tasty, hot, and spicy when it's done. Wow, look at this. Gorgeous looking. All you have to do is mix this and put it right over here. Wow. I enjoy having you all in the audience so much. I keep on saying thank you, thank you. Now, some people gain weight because they don't know what to do with the leftover. So they eat up everything. But that's totally unnecessary because storing leftover is actually very, very simple and very, very easy. So let me show you a few tips. If you have leftover bamboo shoot from the can, you can't use it. All you have to do is put it in a jar, fill it up with water. See, this is bamboo shoot, OK? If you have leftover water chestnut, and change water about one or two days, every two days or so. This water chestnut, also fill it with water, cover with water, so they won't turn sour or moldy. And then here, if you have leftover tofu, tofu, sorry being curd, you also rinse a little bit and fill it with water, cover the whole thing with water. And then you cover this up like this, okay? It will keep for about three to four days. Keep it in the fridge. Don't leave it in your garage. <laughs> and then you have ginger juice, like this. You can actually make a lot of ginger juice. You can dilute it to a whatever percentage of water. So you can always have it at, at, um, at hand. And then here, this is how you store your ginger. Particularly, you're moving to the middle of nowhere. You'll never see ginger the rest of your life. What are you <laughs> going to do? All you have to do is peel the ginger and Put the ginger in dry sherry, like this. Look at this. This is a whole piece of ginger. Please come out, see? The whole piece of ginger. This way, not only you got a gingerly flavor wine, the wine is also intoxicated. <laughs> and then you cover this up, and then you put it in the fridge. It lasts for several months. When you store fresh ginger, you just kind of wrap it up, punch a few holes so they can breathe a little bit. Another way to store Minced garlic and minced ginger, the best way is like the Chinese chef. Put in oil. Let me show you. Here is minced ginger. Here is minced garlic. You see that? This, you can keep it for up to a week. After this, I'm going to put this over here. Then I want to show you something very exciting, very easy to do. I'm going to make pasta with spicy meat sauce. It's my favorite particularly when I'm hungry. I can make this ahead of time so I don't have to do it in the last minute. You start with lean ground pork, or you can use ground beef, any ground meat. Make sure these are the lean ones because you don't want to have excess fat. You want to make a spicy sauce. It should be lean and mean. <laughs> now, I'm going to heat up. To save time, I'm going to heat up my wok once again, get my spatula ready, and I am going to get ready. Here, in this particular sauce, I have approximately half a cup of tomato ketchup. You can use tomato sauce. Half a cup of beef broth, or you can use chicken broth. It's no big deal. And then also have approximately half an onion chopped, and also a tiny bit of chili sauce, about one teaspoon, and also approximately one teaspoon to one to two teaspoon of curry powder. Mix it with a tiny bit of salt and also mix it with sugar, about half a teaspoon of sugar. And then I also want to show you, we need some green onion. So we chop it up. The white part, put them all together and you go like this. While you're watching your wok to heat up, make sure they won't smoke too much. Otherwise, you'll never see your house again. <laughs> Total concentration. 
How you doing? How you doing at home? Okay, when this is done, set it aside. We'll put it over here. Then we are going to cook this up. Now, this is very important. Hard wok, look at this. Hard wok, put a tiny bit of oil, two teaspoons or so. Put some onion. Wow. Toss the onion. Wow, look at this. Isn't that amazing? And then garlic and ginger. About one teaspoon of garlic and one teaspoon of ginger. You can use half or one or one and a half or two. Doesn't make any difference. <laughs> and then put a tiny, tiny bit of ground pork or ground beef, all you want. You can even use ground lamb. And then green onion. Stir this around. Use a spatula to crush this. Look at this, this is a well-seasoned wok. I use this when I was a little kid. I've been using this for 74 years. <laughs> Believe it or not. <laughs> Isn't that fun? Great exercise. How you build up your muscle, you do this about 2,000 times every day. <laughs> Just make sure you catch everything. The idea of doing this is, you know why I keep on doing this? The idea of doing this is you allow uniform cooking. Okay, look at this. Can you smell it? Isn't that wonderful? I hope you at home also can smell it. Okay, and then we'll put curry powder. Wow, this is wonderful. Salt and pepper and a tiny bit of sugar. And then the broth, beef broth and also chili paste, hot stuff. This is good for those people who love hot and spicy food, and also tomato paste. Half a cup. And then we will set this aside. We don't need this anymore. And you gotta make a sauce. While you're making the sauce, you should cook your noodle. Now, if you want to have nice, soft noodle, you cook it a little bit longer. You want it firm. Like my friend Al Dante likes it. <laughs> you cook a little bit shorter, and then after it's cooked, you remove it, and you put it under running tap water to rinse it. Look at how wonderful. Thicken it up slightly with a tiny, tiny bit of cornstarch mixture. And then I have this noodle here. And then all you have to do is pull this, let's shut it off and put this right over here. Oh, look at how gorgeous. Isn't that beautiful? I cannot believe it myself. Now, if you want to make it nice and wonderful, you can do some garnishing, like this green onion flour. How easy to do it, look at this. You look, hold, hold on to it like this and use your knife, you go one. See this? Total silence, please. <laughs> Look at this. And then you go one. You see how you do it? Two. Three. Four. And then you open up, put in ice water. They open up like a flower. Then you can put it anywhere you want. You can put it. <laughs> now, I will show you. You can put it here. Or here, or here, or here, nobody cares. <laughs> now, I want to show you another thing to make this dish look more interesting. This is a garnish everybody can do at home. You go one, two, three, four, five, six. You see this? And then you trim this a little bit and set it aside. And then you have a little fan like this. Can you see that? <laughs> Isn't it amazing? And then every other one, you tuck it in like this. Every other one, you tuck it in like this. Every other one, you tuck it in like this. Can you see that? Isn't it cute? <laughs> and then you use this as a garnish. Can you see how beautiful it is? You do two of these, then you can put it on the other side, symmetrical. Now, this is another garnishing. I think most people would like to learn. It's very simple. Everything I do, you should be able to do at home. Cut a little wedge of tomato, and you use your knife, you go like this. One, two, three, 
four, five, six. And then, look at this. And then you cut it right in the middle. And then you are making a little Chinese uh, rabbit. <laughs> <laughs> look at this beautiful thing. Now, even you are not a frequent shopper like me, you can always prepare delicious dishes with only a few basic ingredients, very simple ingredients from your fridge or your basic pantry. Thank you very much for joining us. You at home and also you in the studio. I have to run. There is a sale on chicken feet. Join in. <laughs>